Hi, my name is Ron Finley. Today I'm going to share with you one of the modules in one of my business training workshops. I hope it helps you a lot. Want to get rich? Ditch the pitch. So, my name is Ron. I'm a professional engineer. I also run a DJ company. And surprise! However, this company caused me to create another one that I needed to run this one. Matrix Business Training Workshops was created to help me run my DJ business, and I think it could help you too. So today, we're going to take a glimpse into that with the elevator speech module, and I hope you enjoy it. Maybe get some nuggets. Love to help you. Let's get started. So the agenda for today is going to be, what is an elevator speech? There's 15 of them, so why do I need so many? What is the formula for an elevator speech? And if this was a live event, of course, feedbacks and next steps would be valuable. But here's my DJ business card. So here's what I do for a living. I entertain people with music, sound, lighting, all that stuff. I love what I do. I live the dream because I work because I want to, not because I have to. And I love doing this. I'm working on my second million dollars of income. Yeah, gave up on the first one. So DJing is my thing. It's what I do. But there's a lot of stuff that goes into running a DJ business or any business that I had to learn the hard way and pay someone else to do. I didn't have the money when I started. I used my own day job money to pay for my business. That was nuts. <laughs> Netted less money and worked twice as long. Finally, I got on my feet and now I understand this whole make-buy decision better. And I was going to do my own appendix operation, but I opted to let the doctor do it. So every business has three parts, no matter what your thing is. But my thing is the same as your thing. We all have this stuff to do. All the stuff that runs a business is the same regardless of what business it is. General Motors has it, IBM has it, McDonald's has it, guess what? We all have it. Here's what it is. Every business in the world is an, involves an input, a process, and an output. And when you understand that, we're all the same. Except we're all different, but not when it comes to the stuff. That's it. This is where we're going to start. So every entrepreneur starts their business, great at what they do, but then too many hats to wear. They're doing all these things, all this stuff that they're actually not great at doing or good at all, actually. And it takes up a lot of your time and you have to deal with it every day. In 1984, I created a company called Matrix Business Training Workshops. And what I learned was there's much more stuff to do than I ever imagined and how do you do it and how do you get organized and what's the best way so you don't end up spending so much time that you don't actually make any money and you don't even have a life so I would invite you to keep an open mind to the possibility that there's a better way evolved over time due to experience or circumstances and these are the key drivers to prolonged business success otherwise it's a hobby Today I'm delighted to share a piece of a thumbnail sketch of this Matrix Unleashed workshop. We teach business owners how to deal with the stuff and the thing and streamline and systematize their businesses in a whole new different way. Even pricing your services, you'll be astonished at what it can help you do. I do everything with the Matrix. So today I'm going to show you a little bit of that. Perfecting the elevator pitch. Does your pitch hit a home run? or strike out. Now some people call it an elevator pitch or a speech, infomercial, even a mission statement. I call it your message to the world, one person at a time. So let's ditch the pitch. Why I call it a speech is because in the only in the few seconds that you have, it's a one-way delivery of your 30 or 60 seconds worth of information not a sentence by sentence back and forth exchange. That's a conversation and we're certainly aiming to get to that aren't we? But first we have to get it started. So why do you have to be so good at this? Because you only get one chance to make a good first impression. Well it turns out you only get one chance to make a lasting impression. Ever had a company that you've dealt with for years and lately the service has gone downhill or the product isn't as good all the work they did for all those years it's all about the last impression the current impression so it's a huge thing I have booked large DJ events far beyond what other DJs get paid not because I'm a better DJ 
because I presented a result in a way that the client can visualize and everyone else just presented a price. I'm not expensive. I'm just highly valued and busy enough to enjoy the fun, not work the business. It's a very nice and interesting place for me at this stage in my life. So a good elevator speech does two things for you. It says what you want to say, the right points for each audience, and the ones that are most engaging. And it doesn't say what you don't want to say that are not relevant or that you're giving away trade secrets or your secret sauce. An elevator speech does two things for the people you're speaking to. It says what they need to hear and want to hear, and it doesn't say what they don't need to hear or don't want to hear. This addresses that WIIFM radio station that you've heard before, where people um, tune out because they're not listening to your radio station of WIIFM, which is what's in it for me. So you've got to address that part of the equation. So which of your 15 elevator speeches would you use and when? I didn't know there were 15. Well, it turns out there are. So I'm a dance teacher and you've heard the phrase practice makes perfect. But only if the practice is perfect practice. Otherwise you get really, really good at being really, really bad. It's a journey. It starts with a single proper step. The elevator speech is that dance. Slow, slow. Then quick, quick, which by the way is Foxtrot. So a good elevator speech needs to create enough intrigue to enable the first conversation to evolve into a more in-depth exchange en route to a relationship that leads to a business opportunity. I think that's an interesting construct. So there's no point talking to a man about your women's only weekend retreat because he can't attend. Sure, he may know women who might, but it's a long shot and relies on him being convinced and conveying your message with your passion and conviction in a timely manner. Okay, that's not going to happen. It's a tough road to hoe. Hi, I'm Ron. Want to get married? Maybe we should go for a coffee date or talk on the phone, right? In other words, you've chosen the wrong speech for this person. You needed the talking to a man about my woman's retreat version of your elevator speech. Now I'm sure you've all been to networking events and overheard conversations or maybe even had these in your own mind or out loud. I don't have enough time. I get caught on the price question. I work too many hours. I need more customers. I wear too many hats. I have a shoebox of receipts. My inbox is a mile high. These are clues as to which elevator speech you need to deliver to this person. Now there's a reason that we have two ears and one mouth. It works better that way. Now here's an elevator speech. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Joe. I'm a plumber. I've been in business for 20 years and serve as the GTA. I charge less than other people, especially if you pay me cash. Call me at 1-800-I-KNOW-LEAK. Or, I make sure your home is safe to protect your family and possessions from being destroyed by even the smallest clog or leak. He didn't even say his name. He didn't say he was a plumber. You may not even know that he is. And frankly, it doesn't matter because he's going to make sure your home is safe. He's going to protect your family. And that's important. If we put this whole thing into line by line, into the matrix, and analyze the choice of every single word, even as I wrote this slide, I changed you to your because a parent will do anything to protect their children. And it's more emotional to talk about their safety and a child's fear they're going to drown than an adult getting out of a basement amid a foot of water. But that's not as scary for us as it would be for little ones. So it's about emotional engagement. So that's kind of interesting. So we have something called the SW test, the acid test. So what? What if in the process of the elevator speech, they can miss mentally object to what you're saying by asking themselves, so what, to every point you make? They tune out. What if they said it out loud? 
how would you feel? So how do we do it? We need a process that can be tested, edited, added to, and adjusted on the fly to deliver the right speech at the right time to the right person for the right result. The Matrix is a process I discovered in 1984 for writing computer software instruction manuals. How would you explain to someone how to use Excel? I've never seen a computer. Where would you even start? Open a new file by clicking the icon. What's an icon? Can you imagine? We take this stuff for granted. So the matrix is, is by definition, is a collection of rows and columns into which coefficients of polynomial equations are placed to solve the equation. Yikes, that sounds pretty scary. Well, for our purposes, the matrix is a table into which information is put about your business by you. Or in this specific case, the things you want to say in your elevator speech. That's less yikes. It's a system versus a document, and it's the classification system that's the key, not something that any word processor can even match. You put what you know in little boxes on the screen so you can see what you know and see what's missing. Pretty easy, eh? So I found this process, and I've developed it, and I've changed my whole life. I've worked this thing since 1984, and I just cannot continuously get over how much it changes everything about the way I think. I got stuff out of my head onto paper so I can solve problems that I now see crystal clear. In fact, before they even happen. It changed my whole life, the way I run my DJ business, my engineering career, everything. I wrote 15 books in the DJ space in the 1990s, long before it was as easy as it is today. And I did it in four months. It's just amazing. So profoundly that in my engineering career, I made $60 million for a company, and it took me 15 seconds. I looked up something that I had put into the matrix, and there was the answer, and everybody else dismissed it. It was right there. Incredible. Good ROI, huh? Suppose you had one minute to talk about your business. What would you say? What if you had 30 seconds? What would you say the same speech and simply stop at the 30 second mark? Mid-sentence? Or pick 30 seconds worth of that content and only make those points to fit the shorter time allotment? What if you had two minutes? What would you say or embellish? What if you discovered halfway through your spiel that one of the people in the group is a competitor and you're merrily spewing out all your secret sauce? Well, time to stop. That's not the way we want to do this. So, my, one of my favorite quotes of all that drives everything in my entire business and personal life is this from Maya Angelou. I've learned that people forget what you said, forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you make them feel. So the goal of our elevator peach speech is to paint an emotional picture in the mind of the listener where they can see themselves benefiting from having met you in a way that makes them feel you care about them. That's such a powerful position to take. Now, I know you've all heard this one. Know, like, and trust. That's who people do business with. And I get it. That's how you earn. But I've discovered there's another piece of this that nobody talks about. And it's an interesting twist. So I hope you like the idea. Imagine that you trust your neighbor. They've been good friends for years. You buy a brand new car. Your kids are over their house playing. Their kids are at your house. So there's a lot of knowing, liking, and trusting. Now you bring home a brand new car. He sees it on the driveway, comes over, hey, nice car, and you talk about it. And How willing would you be to hand over the keys to your brand new car for your neighbor to take it for a test drive? Because if you did, it's not just that you trust him, but you entrust your car. Imagine if it was your children for an overnight sleep. So... This is the big piece for me, the word entrust. It's that crossing of the line, that passing of the baton. It's just so much more significant. Now, here's a short video, but to prove that this works, 
This is an actual testimonial from a bride. And I told this bride that I would create for them and deliver, sorry, create with them and deliver for them the most emotionally engaging wedding experience. And I will be there from end to end to make sure it goes perfectly. I did not tell her I was a great DJ. I told her she would have a great wedding. Listen to what she says. During the COVID pandemic, it was a very, very difficult time to arrange it for our wedding. We spoke to Ron two years ago, and he painted this beautiful picture of the most incredible wedding we could ever even imagine, and more. And not only did he deliver, but he exceeded those wonderful expectations. And because of his help from the beginning to the end of the planning, we were able to execute the most incredible wedding that even I couldn't have even imagined. So thank you, DJ Ron, for everything that you did for us. So that's the power of the result that my process for creating an elevator speech delivers. And that wedding was four times the value commercially of what other DJs charge to do what they do. It's just such a nicer feeling. So I wanted to share with you how we create the elevator speeches. So we use a spreadsheet, not for its mathematical capability, but for the nice little rows and columns that's easy to put information in somewhere. At least it's a starting point. You can't do that in a word processor. It's called a brain dump by some people. Just whatever you think of, we've got a spot for it, and you just got to type it up, put it in the spot. The key is to get your thoughts on the screen, categorize them, and then rearrange them into a compelling story that grabs the listener's ears and heart. It's a better way to get into their head. We deploy what we call parametric analysis to qualify the content so each elevator speech is compelling, complete, and hits the mark within the time you have to speak your piece. It's this parametric coding system I developed that enables me to write content for my website, blog posts, letters, emails, and even my phone calls and in-person client meetings. So the elevator speech is only the start of this amazing process. This is what I teach business owners. So now you can organize and fine-tune everything. That way you get the right speech and you're not in a situation where if you're running into a crash course with a competitor, you have the means by which to change direction and not get caught giving out the wrong speech to the wrong people. It's just an organizational system and it's so elegant and so easy to use. I hope you love it. So how do we collect our thoughts? What to say? to whom we say it, in what order, and not waste time or risk going off on a tangent and miss making a key point. This is just so important. The matrix is the way I found best to tabulate what I know, what to say, in what order, to whom. So I get to say what I want them to know about me, but also entice them in a way that they want to know more. That 30 seconds gets me the five or 10 minutes I was really hoping for. So you've heard of this, W5 plus H, no? Well, I think you have. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. But you got to be careful. People may not be impressed that you're the president, especially if you're also the janitor in your self-employed little one-person business. People may not know care how much you know until they know how much you care. So sometimes the name of the company, which takes precious seconds to say, may not matter yet. That's best left for another time. So... That's an example that you just want to be careful you don't spend your precious time saying things that aren't really relevant yet. So the name, the title, give you authority on when you started your business, sometimes benefits and features that you offer, contact information, and that's how you can help them. So service first, business second. So we created this baseline version of based on time we start with a 60 second version and that you might use at a networking if you're on stage where you have a whole minute to talk. And then we develop a longer version and yeah, there's more you could say. And then there's a shorter version. 
things that you just have to get it out and get it done quick. And then there's the five minute version. If you really want to get into it, maybe use it for an interview when they say, so tell me about yourself. And then there's the 15 second version, which actually drives the business card design. Would you know there's 18 things on a business card and nine things that don't belong? That's another element of the Matrix Unleashed workshop. There's another thing we do. The ATM. And no, it's not a bank machine. It stands for the Audience Topic Matrix. It's the way we control the content that goes into an elevator speech. So the old format would be that you introduce yourself, most people say their name, and sometimes too quickly, especially if it's a culturally rich name. Then they say what they do, their company they work for, which sometimes is impressive, maybe sometimes not so impressive. Or they describe their industry like a real estate agent, and there's a billion of them. And sadly, some people get risk of being put in a bucket by the listener because they know one of those. And so you lose your differentiation. So that's the old format. <clears throat> you list a few features and benefits. You try to build some engagement, which misses their pain point because you don't know what it is yet. And then so your whole elevator speech is pointless. And then you give them a business card. Well, they will take it out of respect, maybe. But really, giving a card to someone with whom you have no relationship, I'm not sure that's the best waste of your two cents. Literally. You didn't put your two cents worth in, but you gave away your two cents. So something to think about. So knowing which of these features will resonate is a matter of having listened to the person tell you what they do, their struggle, and then you can react accordingly. And we have a whole strategy for how do you not go first. So the newer format is you may introduce yourself and speak very, very clearly. You describe how the person that you're speaking to would feel as a result of what you do for them. That creates intrigue. It avoids being put into a bucket by the listener. Then you select a pain point from their list and offer a few features and benefits that can help them with their problem. That builds engagement and it targets their pain point. So now your entire elevator speech is on point. And then you ask how you can help them. Now your card makes sense. So graphically, it kind of looks like this, where you've got your name or not, the action that you can take, how it appeals to them. You create an impact with things that you can do and how you do them. When you can do them sometimes matters. They might need a new roof. Well, I'm available. I can do it, you know, this week or I can do it. You know, I can come over today and have a look. If it's urgent, it's urgent. Sometimes that's all the difference that it is. So it's one thing to have a formula. It's quite another to have compelling content. And the matrix creates that for all 15 elevator speeches. So you're ready no matter what situation you find yourself in. So the matrix for your business is this unleashed workshop. It's two days, not on the same day, or sorry, in the same week. It's two days, one day, one week, and one day the following week. So you've got time, A, not to be away from your business too long, but also to do some of the homework that lets you continue to populate your matrix. I've got a PDF that I can send you and I'm happy to do so because it'll give you a little more information about what we do and what you get out of it. It's jam-packed. I'm telling you, it is jam-packed with information to help you use immediately. In fact, in the workshop. That's why we call it a workshop. You actually do the work in the workshop. So you walk out with your business transformed the day we start. What would one lost sale cost you? How much could you lose? And all of its residuals and the referrals, all the things that come from it. I tell you, it just can't afford that. Not these days. Not ever. So I think, and I promise you, this workshop will change everything you do to a new, efficient, measurable method, and you will never go back to your old ways. Nothing to buy, because you'd have to, you already probably have a computer with a spreadsheet on it, whether it's a Mac or a PC. So there's really no techie stuff to worry about. So I host these live workshops in my COVID-free home, in my 600-square-foot van studio, in my house in Northwest Toronto. I do it weekends and weekdays for up to 12 business owners at a time. I'm also working on getting it to go on to Zoom and online so that people who are from elsewhere in the world can join in and, and get the benefit. So, if you're interested, here's my email, here's my phone number. I'd love to talk to you, see how I can help you. I'd love to have the matrix unleashed on your business.
and revolutionize the way you do what you do without all this stuff getting in your way. Thanks for watching.